In Rasteras performance at 1080p, the new 5680i 16GB comes in around 20% faster than its predecessor. That's a decent step forward, but it still trails the RTX 4070 by a small margin. AMD's RX 7800 XT, meanwhile, isn't just ahead, it's on an entirely different level, offering up to 50% more performance. At 1440p, the generational improvement grows a bit, about 23% over the previous gen, but once again, the 4070 edges out the 5060Ti by roughly 7%, while the 7800XC stretches its lead to 26%. Where things start to get a little bit more complicated though, is in the pricing. On paper, Nvidia's new 5060Ti 16GB launches with an MSRP of $430, which if you look back at the 4060Ti 16GB, launched at around $500, but in reality, Finding it at that price is a little tough. The cheapest 5060 Ti 16GB I found was around $480 and that price steadily increases to $500 and then eventually $530 depending on the model and seller and also place you're getting it from. And that puts it in a bit of a no man's land. It's a better deal than the 4060 Ti and a clear upgrade from last gen but it still lags behind the 7800 XT which often goes for only around $100 more while offering much stronger performance and rasterization. So from a value perspective, the 5060 Ti sits in a tough position, but it's not really a bad card by any means, just not compelling when the 7800 XT exists in the same ballpark. Even the 7700 XT, which I didn't test today, could be worth a look. It does have less VRAM, but it also might deliver better overall value depending on your needs, costing around the same as the cheapest 5060 Ti 16GB. There's also the used market to think about. A well-priced 3060 Ti still offers excellent performance for the money, and if you're already running one, there's not a ton of urgency to upgrade. On the lower end, Intel's Arc B580 deserves a mention too. It offers 12 gigs of VRAM, solid 1080p performance, and comes in significantly cheaper, making it a strong value option for budget-focused builds. Ray tracing is typically where Nvidia holds an advantage, and the 5060 Ti 1080p continues its trend. It shows about a 22% uplift over its predecessor, but the 4070 still leads it by around 6%, and the 7800 XT is pretty close, which is surprising given AMD's usual ray tracing shortcomings. At 1440p, the 7800 XT pulls ahead slightly, but the 5060 Ti keeps a 25% performance lead over previous gen. So if ray tracing is your priority, the 5060 Ti holds up well, delivering competitive value, particularly against the 4070, which costs quite a bit more. DLSS is also worth bringing up, especially now Nvidia's introduced multi-frame generation, with DLSS 4 now leveraging a transformer-based model for even better results. Meanwhile, AMD's RX 7000 series still relies on FSR 3 and 3.1, as the more advanced FSR 4 is currently limited to the new RDNA 4 based RX 9000 series. That said, Nvidia's approach to multi-frame generation feels a bit questionable. It's being heavily touted as this major generational leap, but in reality it comes with compromises and isn't always a clear win when it comes to real world gameplay in terms of latency and performance. Because of this, we decided not to include direct comparisons here. The landscape around upscaling and frame generation is shifting so rapidly and varies so much between these implementations that making a fair apples to apples comparison just isn't realistic right now. That said, we'll save that for future videos. So like this video and get subscribed if you wanna see that. Let's move to individual game performance, starting with Forza Horizon 5. At 1080p, the 5060Ti shows a 20 21% uplift over its predecessor, putting it pretty much on par with the RTX 4070, which isn't too surprising given the overall averages we've seen so far. AMD 7800 XT though pulls ahead by 14%, making it the clear winner in this title and this resolution. Jumping to 1440p and the 5060Ti stretches its lead over the previous gen to 26% and even edges out the 4070 by a small margin by just a couple of frames. Still though, the 7800 XT remains comfortably in front with a 16% lead over the new 5600Ti. Black Ops 6 leans heavily in AMD's favour and it's immediately obvious in the numbers. At 1080p, the 7800 XT pulls ahead by nearly 45%, making it the standout performer in this title. The 5600Ti sees only a modest 13% gain over its predecessor and actually falls 13% behind the RTX 4070, landing it a pretty tough spot. It's not that the performance is bad, it's just that the value starts to slip in 
given this title. At 1440p, the story doesn't change that much. The 5060Ti stretches its lead over the last gen to around 18%, but it still trails the 4070. Meanwhile, AMD 7800 XT extends its dominance to a massive 51% lead, which is the largest margin we've seen across all the games we've tested today. Far Cry 6 at 1080p gives the 5060Ti a stronger showing, with a 34% improvement over the previous gen, but only really brings it roughly in line with the 4070. AMD still leads it, with the 7800 XT pulling ahead by 14%, but the performance gain isn't exactly proportional to the price difference, but it still offers better performance overall. At 1440p, the 4070 edges slightly ahead of the 5060Ti by just a few frames, while the new card maintains a 31% lead over last gen. AMD 7800 XT widens the gap though, leading by 18%, which further cements AMD's advantage in raster workloads. Enabling ray tracing at 1080p shifts the narrative. The 5060Ti takes a clear lead over the 7800 XT with an 11% advantage, but at least the 5060Ti improves over the previous gen by around 33%. It also goes toe to toe with the 4070, effectively matching it. Finally, at 1440p with ray tracing, the 5680i continues to outperform the last gen with a 32% uplift, and again, it brings it neck and neck with the 4070. But this time, the 7800 XT claws back a bit of its lost ground, edging past by around 5%. It's definitely not enough to make AMD the go of two for ray tracing, but it does start to chip away at Nvidia's usual advantage, and in a title like Far Cry 6, it's definitely worth noting. Cyberpunk 2077 follows a similar trend. At 1080p, the 5060 Ti matches the 4070 in overall performance, but its lead over the previous gen dips around 17%. And even in a title like this, where Nvidia tends to shine, AMD 7800 XT still comes out ahead by around 16%. At 1440p, not much changes. The 5060Ti holds similar average performance to the 4070, though it does show a more noticeable improvement in 1% lows, likely down to the extra VRAM. Still though, AMD 7800 XT stretches its lead to 19%, continuing its trend of consistently strong raster performance. Switching on ray tracing at 1080 brings more encouraging results for the 5060Ti. It posts a 29% improvement over last gen and holds its own against both the 4070 and 7800 XT in this scenario. Value is actually quite solid in this scenario, even if it doesn't completely steal the show. And at 1440p with ray tracing, all three of our cards, including the 5060Ti, 4070 and 7800 XT, land in the same general ballpark with only modest gains over last gen. That's pretty much what we've come to expect. It's good progress, but it's nothing revolutionary. Shadow of the Tomb Raider may be an older title, but it still holds some relevance in modern benchmarks. At 1080p, the 5060 Ti lags behind both the 4070 and 7800 XT, and compared to last gen, it only really delivers a 16% improvement, making it one of the least impressive generational games we've seen so far. And things only really improve slightly at 1440p, with the 20% uplift over the previous gen, with it still falling short of the 4070 by 10% and the 7800 XT by 18%, with AMD's card once again taking the top spot in raw performance. Enabling ray tracing at 1080p doesn't really do much to change the story, as the 5060 Ti sees a 15% gain over last gen, but is still outpaced by the 4070 and 7800 XT, which are ahead by 11 and 15% respectively. The 7800 XT maintains its lead, likely helped by the game's relatively light use of ray tracing, which is mainly focused on shadows. At 1440p with ray tracing, the results are largely the same, with the 5060Ti improving on the last gen by 20%, but continues to trail 14% behind the 4070 and 18% behind the 7800 XT. F124 is up next, and at 1080p, things don't really look good for the 5060Ti. It outperforms its predecessor by just under 20%, but both the 4070 and especially AMD 7800 XT by 7 and 27% respectively. That's that said, at 1440p, the 5060Ti shows a bit more of a promise, with the 25% uplift over the previous gen, and narrows the gap with the 4070, particularly in 1% lows, though AMD 7800 XT continues to lead by a sizable 28% margin. When turning on ray tracing at 1080p, 
the 5060 Ti improves by 14% over the last gen, but the 4070 still holds the top spot in overall performance. But it does close the gap in 1% lows, showing a 13% improvement, which is a small but meaningful win. And AMD 7800 XT starts to lose ground here, which is as expected given it's a ray trace workload. The 5060 Ti edges ahead slightly, with both cards delivering similar low frame rate performance. Now, 1440p with ray tracing, and the 4070's 12GB of VRAM starts to really show its limits, which gives the 4060 Ti and 5060 Ti a little bit of a leeway, at least in 1% lows. The 5060 Ti sees a 13% gain over its predecessor, and also finally pulls ahead of the 7800 XT more sizably by around 5%. Our last game is Counter-Strike 2, and at 1080p, the 5060 Ti delivers a 19% improvement over its predecessor, which is what we've come to expect across most titles. However, it's significantly outpaced by the 4070, leading by around 14%, and AMD 7800 XT completely dominates with a 44% lead, giving AMD a clear advantage in this title. Finally, at 1440p, the 5060 Ti once again shows a 19% improvement over last gen, but the story stays the same. 4070 is ahead by 15%, and the 7800 XT maintains a strong lead, outperforming it by around 31%. Now quickly touching on performance for what? And Nvidia's new 5060 Ti, 16GB, is actually pretty decently efficient. Despite drawing around the same power as last gen, it delivers 18% better performance per watt, making it the most efficient card we've tested. And ray tracing is still the most efficient, with the 5060 Ti consuming similar power to last gen, but still manages to be 11% more efficient, reinforcing its architectural gains even more in more demanding scenarios. Overclocking on MSI's gaming trio was relatively straightforward. I was able to push the core clock by 350MHz and maxed out the memory slider to 2000MHz. This card also allows for increased power limits, which I increased upwards of 22% along with a 15% bump in core voltage. This translated to around a 22% increase in power draw, but temperatures only really rose modestly by around 6% thanks to MSI's compact and efficient cooling solution with a triple fan and a dense fin stack that handles the heat pretty well. And across the same 7 games we tested at 1440p, it delivered around a 9% performance gain. And this all means it does outpace the 4070 ever so slightly in rasterized scenarios, but it still falls well short of the RX 7800 XT, trailing still by around 16%. So while overclocking closes the gap slightly, it's really not enough to change the overall value proposition, at least in rasterization. And in benchmarks, starting with Blender, it outperforms the 7800 XT by a noticeable margin, largely thanks to Nvidia's continued advantage with CUDA and optics acceleration. However, the 4070, with its 28% more CUDA cores, still holds a clear lead, delivering 22% better performance. And Premiere Pro shows a 5060 Ti performing similarly to the 7800 XT, which is a solid result, but again it still falls behind the 4070, primarily due to the latter's wider memory bus and higher core count. That said, it's a welcome improvement over the lackluster performance of the last gen, even if it only just pulls ahead of the two generational old 3060 Ti in some workloads. Last but not least in spec view perf, in professional 3D applications like 3ds Max, SolidWorks and Maya, the new 5060 Ti holds its own, showing considerable improvements over its predecessor. And this brings it roughly on par with both the 4070 and 7800 XT, which makes it a reasonably competitive option for lighter professional use. But at the end of the day, the RTX 5060 Ti 16GB really just feels like a cut down 4070, just with a bit more VRAM and better efficiency. It's a decent generational bump, don't get me wrong, especially in ray tracing and productivity, but with AMD 7800 XT often within reach when it comes to price and delivering much stronger raster performance, it's hard to call the 5060 Ti 16GB a clear value pick. That's if you can find it near MSRP. But if that is the case, and you do lean towards Nvidia's ecosystem like DLSS, CUDA, Optics, then sure, it's worth a look. Otherwise, it's a really tough sell when AMD's offering just gives you more for your money in most games. But anyways guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also make sure to check out this video on the screen right now.